Hi hey guys, Ron here again with another little home project. This time we're going to install a flow detector and automatic shutoff valve to prevent damage to the home by leaks that go undetected. Yeah, we chose the Flow Logic uh, system because it seems to be the most comprehensive and provide the greatest protection. It constantly uh, monitors the flow and then based on preset conditions will activate the shutoff valve and stop flow to the house. By default, when in the away mode, the shutdown valve <clears throat> will shut water supply after only 30 seconds of detecting flow. In the home mode, uh, the default setting is 30 minutes. Uh, we found that to be a little high, so uh, we've actually reduced ours to 15 minutes. Another nice thing about the Flow Logic system is there are a lot of useful options. Um, the one that we'll be using is the uh, sprinkler system override, uh, which uh, allows the system to ignore the water flow beyond allowed times when the sprinkler system is on. Some of the others uh, will allow you to have the uh, security system of your house basically when activated switch the controller to the away setting and when disarmed back to the home setting. Another useful option is uh, you can attach a uh, moisture detector at areas of high risk and have that go to your controller and if it detects moisture it will also shut down the system. Here we got the water coming into the house from under the ground and you can see it branches off to the right that's a uh, sprinkler line and goes up to the main shutoff to the house and then takes a 90 going into the house uh, with a uh, hose bib for draining uh, the lines and uh, feeding a hose uh, bib. Here's a sketch of the existing piping and as the uh, red lines indicate we'll uh, remove everything between the one inch source coming up from the ground and the one inch pipe going into the house. On the water supply coming up from under the ground we'll add a T. On the left side, we'll add the uh, flow logic equipment, the shutoff valve, and the uh, flow uh, meter. And then we'll add two isolation valves that'll allow us to uh, do service on that equipment if necessary. To the right side of the T, we'll add a bypass line so that uh, if we have to maintain the equipment for any reason, uh, we'll be able to uh, continue the use of water through the bypass line. And on that bypass line, we'll also add a hose bib, and um, we'll also take off a three-quarter inch line to feed the existing line to the uh, sprinkler. You'll notice uh, our hose for the garden is mounted on the wall uh, to the left of the rose bush and quite a distance from the hose bib. So as part of this project, uh, we'll be installing a new half-inch line over to the vicinity of the uh, hose and putting a new hose bib there uh, for easier access. The uh, shutoff valve and flow meter assembly weighs around 11 pounds. That's quite a bit to just hang off a uh, tee or something. So I decided to support it by uh, the studs in the wall. I uh, ran a little one by three across two studs and a uh, block on each end and a couple of uh, pipe straps and uh, that should do a good job. So plumbing is complete. We've got coming in, supplies coming in down from the bottom, from the ground. Go up to a T. To the right is the bypass, which is open now, and goes into the house going uh, off that T into the brick. Added a hose bib on the space uh, between those two lines. And you can see we also have a valve in the back. Uh, that line feeds uh, the sprinkler in front and a new hose bib, which we ran over to, to here where we uh, 
roll up and uh, keep the hose. Back over here, you can see we feed the uh, new shutoff valve and flow detector through the valve on the bottom, go through the flow detector and uh, shut off valve and come back around and into the house. Right now, both those uh, shut off valves are closed and we're on bypass. However, we did have them open uh, to prove uh, no leaks. Uh, we're keeping on bypass now while we finish up the electrical work. Okay, we're going to use this uh, Home Depot Communication Center uh, to house the battery and the power supply and the irrigation um, override relay. And um, you can see we got the cutout in the wall. We've got, got some flex running up from the outlet below directly through the space where we're going to put the um, communication box. Um, we're going to cut the uh, flex right about there, mount an outlet in the communication box, and then continue down to the outlet below. So we'll have um, a source of 110 in the uh, communication box uh, to feed the uh, power supply um, unit. You'll also notice that uh, we had to chip away at the uh, stud on the left, left side. The communication box is uh, designed uh, for 14 and a half inches between studs, uh, so on 16 inch spacings. Problem is with older houses, the two by fours are actually a little bit thicker, so it was closer to 14 inches and 14 and a half. So we had to just uh, trim away a little bit on that stud. And then just on the other side of this wall outside is where the uh, valve will be. So everything will be uh, nice and close by. So now we're starting to uh, lay out the uh, low voltage box. Now you can see uh, holes at the bottom and at the top of the box where the uh, conduit, the flex conduit will uh, pass through and uh, let us mount the uh, 110 outlet inside the box. On the left you can see uh, the Velcro strap. We cut slots in the back and on the uh, uh, top and bottom of the battery so that we could secure the battery with the Velcro strips. So today we stationed the uh, low voltage uh, box. Uh, you can see that we have installed an outlet uh, in that line that was running uh, on along the right side and we used a little extension on that box to line it up with the uh, switch box below. And uh, you can see we've mounted the uh, power supply and the sprinkler relay. Um, we did that by uh, drilling a hole in the metal and tapping it for uh, 632 machine screws for the relay and 832 uh, machine screws for the uh, power relay, which is quite a bit heavier and the mounting holes are larger. And we also, uh, what you can't see, is drill the hole in the fire break above this so we'll be able to drop a line from the controller uh, if we just want mount it above the, the uh, low voltage box. Also you can see the uh, the gray plastic PVC coming in the center of the bottom. Uh, that's for the uh, low voltage wires to go out through the uh, outer wall and uh, to the valve. I was pretty fortunate. The uh, there was an extra wires uh, in the cable coming up to the sprinkler shutoff valve, right near the installation of the Flow Logic. Well, here we're at the uh, sprinkler controller, and uh, you can see we we're fortunate. We had an extra wire uh, from the cable going to the various sprinkler uh, shutoff valves, and that orange wire there you can see is hooked up to the master valve um, and that orange wire will now go out and where it meets up with the uh, wires going through the various uh, sprinkler valves we'll find the one going up to the front of the house and uh, make our connection there 
And here we have the final installation. You can see the uh, bypass valve is shut. And the valves going to and from the flow logic shutoff valve are open. The cables um, going from the power supply to the flow logic are installed. And the cable going from the flow logic up to the control unit is also uh, installed. And you can see the uh, third wire coming out from the house heading off to the right and going to the um, sprinkler shutoff valve where there was that extra wire going back to the sprinkler controller and to the master valve. Okay, here's the uh, completed installation. That uh, white cover covering the uh, low voltage box uh, will eventually be painted the same color as the wall so be hardly noticeable. The uh, lower electronic box is uh, an accessory uh, basically that allows the um, controller to co connect with, through your Wi-Fi to an app on your phone. That way if a uh, leak is detected and shuts down water they'll send a notification to your phone wherever you are. We got the water flowing through the kitchen faucet and a little indicator on the right side there is showing that it is detecting flow. Now we've uh, turned off the kitchen faucet and there is no flow in the house. The indication on the right side has now disappeared showing that there is no flow. We have turned on the sprinklers and you can see that it says home override. That is the uh, relay telling the little uh, computer here that the sprinklers are on and don't panic. Okay, so now we're going to put it in the away mode and make sure that it uh, closes the valve the way it's supposed to. Now it's saying away, making some changes out there. And we'll go turn on the uh, kitchen faucet and time the 30 seconds to see if it shuts off. So water is flowing. To see it's detecting flow over on the right side. And after 30 seconds, it says, hey, I got a leak and shuts the valve. And you can hear in the background, the water has stopped flowing. Here we have the alerts received by uh, my cell phone. At uh, first it shows mode change uh, from home to away, then the automatic shutoff when a leak was detected, and then finally the reset to the home mode. 